Hey guys, this is Tyler with That Worship Sound, and this is a video on how to sync Logic Pro and Main Stage. Now, a few years back, we did a similar video on this topic, but as you know, software updates and you know Mac OS updates have kind of changed the way things look and work. So this is the 2023 update on how to sync Logic Pro and Main Stage. Now, before we get started with the actual tutorial, I'm gonna give a brief explanation about how this works. If you wanna just get to the actual nitty gritty and just get to setting it up, then go ahead and fast forward to the next chapter. If you're still hanging around, I'm just gonna briefly talk about the concepts behind how this works. We're going to use Logic Pro, which is a DAW, to send both tempo changes using MIDI clock and patch changes using MIDI program changes to main stage. These tempo and patch changes will be sent automatically from a logic session that is playing. So it makes it super convenient. Now, this is actually super simple to set up using a virtual device called Logic Pro Virtual In or Out, which is a virtual MIDI device included in Logic Pro. You can use Logic Pro Virtual In to receive MIDI messages from another music app and use Logic Pro Virtual Out to send MIDI messages from Logic Pro to another music app on your Mac. So um, today we'll be using Logic Pro Virtual Out to send this information to main stage. Before we start, I'm gonna show you the versions of the software that I'm using. Logic Pro is at version 10.7.9 and main stage is at version 3.6.4. All right. And I am currently on Mac OS Ventura 13.6. Now, um, well, if you want to see my other computer specs, I am on a 2018 MacBook Pro with this processor, this memory, and all this stuff is up to, up to date as of um, fall 2023. All right, let's get started with tempo changes. So let's go to Logic really quick. I'm going to go to New. And we'll just use a software instrument for now. All right. I'm also going to jump over to main stage, go to new, and I'm going to just use this default template under keyboards called keyboard minimalist. All righty. And I'm going to delete the first patch because I don't need it. All righty. Let's jump into logic really quick. Actually, before I do that, let's go back to main stage. I'll just change it because instead of showing the clock, I want it to actually just show tempo. So I'll just set to show the tempo. All right, cool. Back to logic. So now this is our session for creating um, just all the MIDI stuff like that. So if you use different logic sessions, you'll have to set this up in every single one that you want to use to send data over to main stage. First thing let's work on is sending the tempo. I'm going to click on file, jump on down here to project settings and synchronization. I'm going to click on the MIDI tab. All right, and destination, Logic Pro Virtual Out, which we talked about, is gonna be the destination, and I'm gonna check the clock button. And then it also on clock mode, I'm just gonna click on this bottom option, SSP at play start only. And I'm going to turn on cycle for these four measures here. And let's set the tempo to 91. As you can see in main stage, it's still at 120. 
what I'm gonna do is click on this untitled concert. So I'm gonna click on the concert level, click on timing, which already was. Oh, well, there's a tab called timing, click on that. You'll choose from MIDI input and I'm gonna choose Logic Pro Virtual Out. Obviously you can leave it on all, but to make this real clean, I'm gonna select Virtual Out. All right, jumping back to Logic, I'm going to hit play. So it's 91 tempo here. Now the tempo here is changed to 91 as well. <laughs> now you say, what if I have a, you know, a live session with different songs, different tempos and things like that? Well, let's go here to number one and set it to 91 in here. We'll change it to, there we go, 101. And I'll set the original one to 87. So as you can see here, there's now a tempo change from 87 to 101. So I'm just gonna hit play again. We're at 87 and it's going to hit the next tempo. Boom, jumped up to 101. It's gonna go back down to 87. Then it's gonna jump up to 101. Sweet. And that's how you kind of do that in Logic. So if you have different songs, say for example, you have all like a uh, like a set list of like five or six different songs or something like that, you have them all loaded up in Logic, just program your tempo changes up here or over here. And those tempo changes will be reflected into main stage. Now let's work on setting up patch changes. First thing we have to do is tell Logic, hey, send program changes to our virtual device so main stage can see it. To do that, I'm gonna actually use this instrument track we created earlier. But what you have to do is on the instrument slot, select that, go down here to utility and choose external instrument. I'm just gonna choose stereo, although it doesn't really matter. And the next thing we do is for MIDI destination, we're gonna just gonna pick Logic Pro Virtual out. Um, I'll leave it at all channels for now. Now it's time to send program changes. So I'm going to uh, right click and actually just click on create MIDI region. Uh, we can, you know, you can rename these and things like that. But I'll just leave it for now. I'm also going to duplicate this and make a second one. Actually, and I'll move them over. So 87, so tempo 87 will have a patch and tempo 11 will have a patch. So I'm going to select the first region here so it's highlighted and lights up and it's a white bar on the top. Now I'm gonna jump over here to the editor and click on the event tab, all right? Then what we have to do is this drop down select program change and we'll press the plus symbol all right we don't really have to mess with any of these options really we just want we're gonna just work with this number down here which is the value and we're gonna leave it at zero so zero is, um, is gonna be um, patch change one because in terms of numbering um, program changes always start at zero and go to 127. All right, so now we're gonna select the second region, do the exact same thing, but this time I'm gonna change the value to the next number up, which is gonna be one. So we have, as you can see, it says zero there and one there. I'm going to rename this as well. So the shortcut is shift N or right click and go to name and color. I'm gonna call this patch one and then rename this to say patch two. Now we have to just tell main stage to look for MIDI and look for pack look for these patch changes or these program changes, right? So I'm jumping back here to main stage. Before we add the patches, let's make a quick check in the main stage settings under MIDI. 
And what you're going to do is in the MIDI display program change range. Set it, make sure if it's not, make sure it's set to zero to 127. That way we match up with the zero to 127 numbers that logic gives us. All right. So it's set to zero to 127. The next thing I like to do is then click on this, uh, the patch list action menu and go to display options and make sure um, bank and program number, bank and program numbers is checked. And create two of these. Alrighty. So we have two patches now. Uh, the first patch is already selected here. Program change is checked and it's set to zero, zero, zero. And we have, this one is checked and set to zero, zero, one. So that matches with our patch zero here and our patch one there. All right. The next or the last step is to click here at concert level. Go back over here to the left here to MIDI tab. And then what we want to do is under program change here, select device and go to virtual out like usual. Also uncheck this because, you know, sometimes program changes, you know, can uh, affect plugins, but we don't want to do that. We want to use program changes only for changing patches. So we have the two patches. And I'm going to name this one to be patch one. And this one, I will change it to say patch two. All right. Now for the experiment, I'm going to hit play. All right. So now this tempo change changes the patch as well. And we're going to go back to the beginning. Patch changes perfectly. The clock changes as well. All right, so now they're just kind of cycling back and forth. It's pretty simple, right? We went back to logic really quick and make this a little longer. Say we have multiple patches we want to do or something like that. I'm just gonna make these a little shorter. I, oops, don't want to open that up. Um, Patch three, patch four, and this one we'll call patch five. That's all we'll do for now. Patch three, we set the value to two. Patch four, the value becomes three. Patch five, the value is four. So you can almost think of it as like patch five, my, take all these numbers minus one and that's your value and then we'll do the same thing on here patch three patch four patch five and I'm gonna highlight them all and I'm gonna do the whole thing, reset program numbers. And they're done already, P0, P1, P2, P3, P4. All right. Go to tempo, I'm just gonna go to plus and type in 145. All right, let's see how this goes. All right, so we're on patch one. I'm looking over here, about to hit the second patch, about to hit the next patch, about to hit the next two patches really quick. Back to the first patch. Yeah, so that's kind of how this works. You can have as many patches as you want, as many patch changes as you want, as many tempo changes as you want. Literally no limit. There's literally no limit. All right. If you set it up like this, you should have zero problems. Um, some common errors I've seen would be to, um, in this external um, output here, I've seen people turn this on. Um, this will kind of make MakeSage freeze up because it's looking, it's like sending double program changes 
these MIDI clips are setting the program changes. So you don't, you're not going to do any program changes within the actual um, external instrument slot there. Um, trying to think. Yeah, the patch changes do change with the cursor. So patch three, actually patch two will be selected now. Um, that doesn't work for clock though. Clock has to be playing. The cool thing you can do in main stage also is for troubleshooting. Um, like if something like this is running, you'll see up here in the top where it says MIDI in, you'll see values up here. But sometimes for troubleshooting, you want to see exactly what's going on in main stage, right? So you can always click on window, click on MIDI message monitor, right? This shows all the MIDI that main stage is getting. Um, this main, this for, there's one that's like filling it up like crazy. That's a system real time clock. That's just the, it's showing that the tempo is constantly being sent. It's not just like one time. And, and it's done. It's like a constantly running clock thing coming from Logic. So let me uncheck that. That way um, we can see some other stuff happening. Let me clear this. Channel one, program change two, program change three, program change four, program change zero. So you can see also here the program changes coming in from uh, Logic. Stop this. As you can see, when I press stop, I also sent a message over to main stage, but that's not really um, going to be used in this tutorial. All right. Anyway, I hope this was super helpful. Um, and if it worked for you, awesome. Let us know if it worked. If it didn't work, let us know. And we can kind of try to help troubleshoot with you or uh, update, even update this tutorial for um, the future releases. All right. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And as always, Make sure you go to That Worship Sound for all your patches, all your sounds, all your samples. That's the one stop shop for the highest quality and best sounding stuff in the world. See you guys soon.